Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 18th of September. And we'll be able to set up beyond that with the CFS and Isham Ensembles. Maybe we'll try a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS B2 for October at the end of the video. And I should get time for that for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video is today was our 6am UK weather forecast. And also the Jeremy Fry as well. Please check out those two vids if you'd like to do that. Like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We need to put on around 88 subscribers to get ourselves to uh, 16.9k. So, uh, we are well past 16.8k now. Thank you so much again for getting us to 16,800 subscribers. And, uh, yeah, let's push on to 16.9k. Ultimate target, 17k. is getting ever, ever closer. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that. Could be live streaming at 10pm this evening, Friday night Friday Night Lies return for season four. Goodness gracious me, what have I let myself in for? Uh, so I shall see you a little bit later on, maybe, for that. Okay, so in the Tropical Atlantic, we've got two storms. We've got Hurricane, or oh, Tropical Storm, Margo, just here. We've got Hurricane Lee. So let's do it with Margo first of all. Uh, Tropical Storm Margo giving maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour, minimum sets pressure of 1,004 millibars. If we go here, we can see that Margo is forecast to become a Category 1 hurricane. Current position is just there. Margo is going to be pushing northwards by the Middle of next week, Category 1, Hurricane Margo will be uh, to the west of the Azores. We should wait and see what happens with Margo. We've also got Hurricane Lee. Check this out. Uh, this is uh, giving maximum sustained winds of 165 miles per hour. That is a Category 5 hurricane with a minimum set pressure of 926 millibars. Lee is moving west northwest was at 14 miles per hour. Clicking on Lee, we can see that this major Category 5 hurricane is uh, currently just here and will be going in that direction over the weekend into next week. So by the middle of next week, Lee is to the uh, north of the Dominican Republic. And Puerto Rico uh, is to the east of the Bahamas and is to the south of Bermuda. So we shall wait and see where Lee goes ultimately. Uh, now, going here, we can see that currently, as I say, Lee is giving maximum state winds of 165 miles per hour, but within the next 12 hours, Lee is forecast to power up even more and will be giving maximum sustained winds of 180 miles per hour. Absolutely phenomenal. When you think of the ferocity and the power of, of, of that, uh, a sustained wind of 180 miles per hour, I mean, gusts are probably going around 210, 220 miles per hour with, with this hurricane. Um, just the enormity of the power is mind-boggling that you can get with these storms when they reach Category 4 and, and especially Category 5 as well. Um, even at 120 hours, it has weakened a little bit, but at least still giving maxim maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour. That is still a high-end Category 4 hurricane. So, thankfully, at the moment, Lee, despite all of its power and ferocity, Lee isn't impacting anywhere, you know, directly anyway, there will be indirect consequences from Lee. For example, the Leeward Islands will be getting large amounts of, uh, of surf and whatnot, and that will be uh, affecting like, um, the, uh, the, the, the Bahamas, and etc., Bermuda, uh, probably by the middle of next week, maybe even the east coast of the United States. So indirect, um, indirect consequences, yes, but thankfully Lee is not impacting anywhere directly at the moment as, as a Category 5 hurricane, because if he was, then obviously the devastation would be um, would, would be would, would be start. So uh, at the moment, Lee is just a ferocious storm that we can all um, you know observe and and just be in awe of its power. And it's not direct uh, directly impacts anywhere. It's just, just a ferocious storm in the middle of the uh, tropical and subtropical Atlantic Ocean. Anyway, we're going to keep you updated about Lee. Hurricane Lee at the channel, of course, over coming days as we further on exactly where Lee is going to go. 
Coming back to home, another hot day out there, 30 degrees being recorded widely across south eastern parts of the country. Some the latest temperature observations from XC Weather, another hot one out there. Where I am in North Hans, it's not as hot today because uh, we've had a lot of haze. There's a lot of cloud going on, high cloud anyway. Um, and uh, that's uh, keeping the temperature just a couple of degrees cooler than it was yesterday with those clear blue skies. But it is very warm and humid uh, here. And, and further south, we've got more sunshine actually. Um, you know, it's another really hot day. But it's potential that to pop up to 31 or 32 within the next hour or so. OK, well, look at the central temperature continuing. It's inexorable rise. We are, we are now sitting at 19.7 which is an unbelievable 6.1 degrees, over 6 degrees above the 61 to 1990 average, provisional to yesterday to the 7th of September. That will rise more, I think, by the time it updates tomorrow. That will probably be in the 20s. And I've got another very hot day to come tomorrow. So I would have thought by the beginning of next week, that's going to be sort of mid to high 20s, probably. Probably about 7 degrees, <laughs> 7 degrees above average. That will be the peak. It will start to come down through next week. We shall wait to see how quickly the CT drops. Although we're going to have a very unusually and abnormally high CT for the first 10 days of September. There is still time to cool that down quite a lot. So I know a lot of you are very concerned about us having a, a 15 or 16 Celsius CT September, maybe even 17 Celsius CT September. And that could still happen. But there is also time, particularly if we were pulling some northerly winds for the second half of September, there is still time to induce a CT crash. And whilst I don't think we can get a below average CT for September, obviously, where possibly we could still, uh, you know, there's a possibility we could still pull back down into the 14s, let's say. Um, so let's wait and see how the second half of September plays out. But definitely an incredibly hot sort of first week to 10 days of September. That goes without saying. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks on Birmingham today, red line 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. We started off very substantially above average. Got another couple of days of, of the hot upper and surface temperatures to go, but a cool down towards the end of the weekend, and especially into early to middle of next week, we'll see the temperature return back to, or possibly even going a little bit below average for the upper air temperatures anyway. And then into the second half of September, we hover close to long-term 30-year averages. There's no sign of going back to the excessive heat that we've had over the first weeks and days of September. Precipitation-wise, turning more unsettled as well, starting to see some showers breaking out through the weekend. And through next week, the trend is increasingly unsettled. And into the second half of September, we have got some really quite big precipitation spikes showing up there. So um, possibly a much wetter second half to the month. Temperature anomaly should be 8 to 16 for September above average. Still another hot week to come. And precipitation anomaly should be 8 to 16 for September. Driving average in England and Wales, a little bit wetter than average. Further north as expect those anomaly charts to trend wetter and cooler over the coming days. Latest from that, uh, northschool.net shows that we've got high pressure sitting over and to the east of the country. Let's drag this down, though, because what we really want to look at is Hurricane Lee. And there he is. Well, we've got two, of course. We've got Margo uh, just there, which is a tropical storm. will become a Category 1 hurricane by the end of the weekend. But one we really want to focus on this is what a Category 5 hurricane looks like. Check this out, everyone. Category 5 Hurricane Lee. Uh, wow, 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 wow. That is what a Category 5 hurricane look, looks like on these wind flow maps. That is giving maximum sustained winds of 120 miles an hour. Just look at that. <laughs> How those lines are wrapping around that low pressure. Imagine if you was in the centre of that. I love these maps from Earth Null School. You know, at, the, at this time of the year, when we go in depth into these uh, hurricanes and zoom in, that is the eye, of course, of Hurricane Lee. What must that be like to be in the centre there? That's as far as we can go, I think. But what can, what would that be like, you know, to be in the centre, uh, clear blue skies, beautiful blue skies, light winds, 
um, after all of the havoc of, of this side of Lee and all of the havoc still to come on the other side of Lee. But for, for just for, for an hour or so, half an hour, an hour, you get a, you get a period of tranquility and of peace and of, and of beauty before the devastation returns. Must be absolutely incredible to experience that. But obviously very, 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 very devastating uh, as well. Wow, wow, wow. Category 5, Hurricane Lee with Max and stay winds at the moment of 165 miles per hour and will be up to 180 miles per hour max and stay winds in 12 hours time with gusts up to 200 210 and 20 miles an hour possible okay let's come back home and uh, we have a look at the chart data so this time ladies you can bet your run is talking big night on monday trough of low pressure coming in from off the atlantic will be bringing showery conditions and eventually drop in the temperature too so by middle next week winds are in from the north northwest much cooler air coming in from the north atlantic part of maritime and that will uh bring end to a heat wave a ridge trying to build through the middle of next week that's quickly swept aside by this area of low pressure bringing uh unsettled weather and quite cool conditions in from off the atlantic by next friday that's as far as we go with the uk met your run icon again for sale of low pressure in from the atlantic or a trough anyway through the early part of next week we'll see showers break out and it will lower the temperature as well. And then another area of low pressure, quite significant low coming in from off the Atlantic by the end of next week, threatening a wet and windy and quite cool Friday next week. GFS midnight run, again, showing that uh, we bring that trough in from off the Atlantic through the early part of next week. We lower the temperature. We have some showers breaking out. A ridge tries to build through the coast. That's quite a cool ridge as well, by the way. Some quite cold nights. Tries to build through the middle of next week. That quickly pushed aside by the next area of low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. There's Margo to the... Uh, let's change the cover, actually. There is Margo uh, to the west of the Azores. There's Lee moving up towards Nova Scotia. Okay, so what happens? We go up towards day 10. We get this area of low pressure here starting to develop through the Bay of Biscay. Now, this is quite interesting this area of low, because by day 10, which is the 18th of September, that becomes a significant feature. If I go back to the day 9 chart, I can show you that that is actually like the spawn of Margot. There's a trailing weather front through here that then wraps around Margot a little bit uh, like that. And the waves along that trailing weather front are eventually about quite a significant area of low pressure. So we actually get an indirect impact from uh, Margot there, with GFS Midnight Run, around days 8, 9, 10. That, is, that low just there is the spawn, what I would call the spawn of Margot. Wow, 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 wow. Margot itself is still down here, of course. Um, but that brings some very cool and very wet weather uh, around days 9 and 10, becoming a significant area of low pressure across the south. There with the GFS Midnight Road. Dartboard low sitting across the country as we get through to the middle of the following following week. That's Wednesday, 20th of September. And then Margot herself starts to make a move. So here's Margot just here. Um, and eventually, by the very end of the GFS Midnight Run, 24th of September, that is Margot moving in uh, across the country. More heavy rain, particularly for England and Wales. You'll notice another, uh, what looks like tropical storm or something, hurricane just on the extreme left of the chart as you're looking at it begin to appear as well. Very active GFS Midnight Run. It's probably a bit over the top, we'll see. But for GFS 6 then, um, once more looking rather showery on Monday and eventually turning cooler through next week. That trough low pressure digs in from the northwest and pulls wind in to a cooler north or northwest. You've been low pressure back in through the second half of next week. That brings unsettled conditions with it. There's the spawn of Margo again, just here around day 9, 17th of September. That's ready 
expecting heavy rain into uh, the south, so turning wet and quite cool with northeasterly winds, strong northeasterly winds uh, as well. That bring a lot of heavy rain into the south and into the southeast with that area of road pressure. Ridge be, uh, be builds after that. That's quite a cool ridge though. Probably would have some quite cold nights. And then beyond that, just was rather more changeable. Not as unsettled as the GFS big night run with the six there, but certainly changeable. No sign of a return to the uh, really hot weather that got at the moment. Um, I think that is another tropical storm and or hurricane, uh, by the way, just there. If you enjoyed the video, please do you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals Weather. We thank you so much everybody for doing that. 88 subscribers will get us to uh, 16.9k. We are getting so close now. 17,000 subscribers. We're on like the final push really to 17k. Thank you so much everybody for getting us this far. And, uh, and, and let's carry on pushing on 17,000 subs. Thank you so much. Okay, GM, once more, but shut the low pressure moving in from the uh, North Atlantic on Monday into Tuesday and Wednesday, rather cool and showery with both north, north, wet, easterly winds. Um, then high pressure ridges through the country around the middle part of next week. That's quickly swept aside by the next area of low pressure heading in for the second half of next week, increasingly unsettled up to day 10 with low pressure being spells of rain and cooler temperatures as well with the GM there. And then the East Sham WF once more going rather showery by the beginning of next week as that shock moves in from the north and also bringing cooler polar maritime air from off the Atlantic. So by the middle of next week, we're looking a lot cooler with winds in from a northerly direction and changeable as well. Further areas of low pressure are in the ascendancy here, bring more wet and uh, eventually unsettled and cool weather in by day 9 and 10. Let's trap that the hurricane, shall we? See if we can... Um, do that. So it's 72 hours. I think uh, I think that's going to be Margot just there. I don't think that's Lee. I think that's Margot uh, just there. And as we go through... So I think eventually what happens with each um, rather different to the other model output, by the 17th of September, Margot is just there. And I think that's going to be Lee just there. So kind of merging Margot and lead together there. I think that's what happens, but but I haven't looked at looked at wider northern hemispheric northern hemispheric view with the ECM actually see what uh, those what what those storms are doing, you know. But I think that's right. Uh, okay, so potential wise based on that ECM run from spreadshow.com, lots of showering uh, conditions to come uh, later on in the weekend into the beginning of next week, especially for central northern and western areas. Still reasonably reasonably dry boat down in the south. Further showery weather through the early part of next week again for central northern and western areas in particular. Some rain though getting down into the south with the early part of next week. That would be quite uh, useful. Dry around the middle, middle of next week and then low pressure is back in once again towards the end of next week bringing increasingly wet weather around day 9 and 10. Signs of quite a lot of heavy rain starting to break out by then. These are the options on the table Within the East Shell Ensemble today, four day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office gets us to the 18th of September. 28 members of the East Shell Ensembles with low pressure right over top of the coach up, looking very unsettled at day 10. It does include the control and the operation run. 23, not as unsettled, but still a bit on the showery side uh, with that one, to be honest. In two-week time, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 23rd of September. 20, 17 members of the ECM ensembles look very unsettled again. Low pressure through the country, cool and wet. 10 with low pressure weight to the northwest, high pressure down towards France. That's going to be showery at the very least. Probably quite warm still in the south. 9 with low pressure over to the east of the country, that looks unsettled, cool and wet. Eight with low pressure right over top of the country. And seven with high pressure over France and below countries. Some lower pressure to our southwest that will draw up a southerly wind. So it will be very warm and or hot. Um, but uh, could still be reasonably dry down the south. However, I think we're firming up here on a much more unsettled second half to September. I think that's the way the uh, trends are going. So after this hot, dry first week to 10 days of September, I think autumn 
in terms of unsettled weather is arriving through the middle part of the month, taking us into the second half of September. CFSB2 for October, finally, this is the latest 700 millibar height anomaly for October. For October, remember these change daily. Today, the 700 millibar heights has low pressure out to our west and is bringing up like a southwesty southerly wind. So it's a warm October being predicted here with above average temperatures around one, two, three degrees above normal. But also hints that it could be quite a wettish October, especially to our west. Um, however, we've got enough to worry about with September, I think, without being too concerned about October. So uh, we shan't dwell too long on that. OK, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this all our video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to tell friends about Gareth Weathers as well. Ask them to subscribe. We're pushing on now to uh, 16.9K and, of course, 17,000 subscribers is the next big target. So um, we're not quite on the final push to 17K. That'll be when we hit 169 but um, we're, we're very close now. We're very close to the final push to 17K. Please give us a sub. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, just coming up tomorrow, going to have a 6 I know the weekend. You have a 6 a.m. broadcast. We will have the EC42 day. We've got weekend broadcast and a 10 to 14 day for you tomorrow. Four videos. Wow, wow, wow. And then on Sunday, again, a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. And uh, we will have the second winter update. Yes, winter updates commence last weekend. Epic, epic, epic. First winter update. Next instalment of the winter countdown with update number two will be uh, on Sunday, uh, released at 10 a.m. We'll be live streaming at 6 p.m. on Sunday discussing that uh, winter update. We'll also do a 10 to 14 day and show you plenty of long range as well. So that's all to come over the weekend. And talking of live streams, we're going to be live tonight at 10 p.m. Season four of Friday Night Live Stream are returning and so I shall be spending the rest of the afternoon and evening getting a little bit giddy maybe so <laughs> we'll see I shall see you a little bit later on if you're around my channel at 10 check in for that but for this one that's all for now and thanks for watching